Hey guys, sorry I haven't uploaded as much lately. I haven't really been doing a lot of talking to the camera. I've been really sick, lost my voice, yay. So I haven't had time to upload as regularly as usual, regularly. But, but today I wanted to talk about my Airbnb experience. Okay, and I want to preface this by saying I've used Airbnb four times or so already, and I'm still going to continue to use it despite my story I'm going to tell you. So, Marie and I just went to Chicago to see Dee Devontis. It was the top level of an apartment building. The owner was out of town. It was 17 degrees in Chicago. It was freezing. Because it was so cold, the owner went to Florida and he said the apartment was all ours, which was cool. There was two bedrooms. He texted Marie and said that he would prefer us to use the side guest room because there was going to be another guest coming in the next day after we had already left at like 10 30 or whatever. I really liked the other bedroom and I was actually tempted to stay there but I actually have this thing where if I'm not sleeping in my own bed, if I'm sleeping somewhere I'm not as familiar with, I have to be like sleeping next to a wall, like directly right next to the wall or I have to be against something. I think it all stems from when I was a kid I would fall out of bed a lot and so I think now as an adult I have to have like things next to me. There were like a couple of couches and the bed wasn't really close to a wall so I didn't really want to stay there so I kind of set up camp on the couch that was like in the hallway. It was actually kind of noisy and that kind of stuff because it was like in the heart of the city. It wasn't like in a little town off to the side or something. Not only that, I was just like in an unfamiliar place. I've only been to Chicago one other time and so I was just kind of feeling all kinds of different things. But I did go to sleep and at like around 3 a.m. I heard like a jiggling at the door and as far as I know Marie and I were gonna be the only ones in the apartment because like I said the guy was out of town and I'm on the couch like frozen I'm just, I don't know what to do I just thought maybe it was something from another apartment and I could hear like the door twisting and I'm just like on the couch about 10 feet away, just like, um, I'm, I'm absolutely frozen in, in my spot. I don't know how to, I'm supposed to react because I don't know what's going on. And the door opens. We were supposed to be the only ones in the apartment. And I saw like a woman with a hat, like a knit hat on. And I was just like, I really just did not know what to do. I was just, you, like when you watch a movie about like a home invasion like people like run and, and go for their phone and like call the police or whatever and I was just like what do I do and Maureen's in the other room she's asleep she has no idea any of this is going on and I saw her go by because she was going into the bathroom and while she was doing that I was like should I say something what do I do <laughs> and then I heard her go up the steps to the other bedroom, the one that the guy said that he would prefer us not to use, but we could if we wanted to. I'm just like, um, and so then I hear her coming back downstairs, like a few minutes later, I'm like, hello? And that's like the stupidest thing, because like when you watch a horror movie and someone's trying to see if there's, if there's like a killer or something, you hear like the, the actor or actress go, hello? Like the serial killer is going to respond with, oh, hey, what's up, you know? And it's one of those things I'm like, I would never do that. And then I did. So after I said hello, she said, oh, I didn't mean to scare you. I'm the host's daughter. Uh, okay. And she said that she was stopping by to sleep there because she needed to catch an early train. And I was like, okay. So then she, she walked outside. It was like super quiet. And then I realized that I left my, of all the times, I left my purse on the table and my wallet was actually wide open because for some reason before I went to bed I needed to use chapstick which is something I don't do and like these these things are popping into my head like shoot and so like I get up and start to like kind of get my things together I just it's not that I don't know I don't want to say I didn't like trust her or anything but you know I was in a, a city that I did, don't know anybody and I didn't you know, I was in an unfamiliar place, and so I ga gathered my stuff together, and all of a sudden she, like, appeared, like, in the shadows, like, literally, like, a foot away from me, 
And so it's like, how long was she standing there? And, but I think she was, she was just coming inside from going out to smoke or something, but she was kind of like in the shadows and, and she was just, I was just saying how like, this is a really cool apartment and she was just talking and stuff. And I mean, it was like, it was fine, but she walked away. I took my purse and stuff and like gather it and just like literally used it as my pillow. I texted Maureen because after that happened, I couldn't go back to sleep because I was just, my adrenaline was just going and I was just not really scared, but I was just like, I have no idea what's even gonna happen. So I texted Maureen and you know, that morning or whatever, we were getting ready to leave and I'm pretty sure that she was still there. So like if I would have slept in the room with Maureen, she would have been sleeping in the other room and she would be sleeping there like at the same time and we wouldn't have even like encountered her because uh, Marie never even saw her so it's like kind of freaky like knowing that you were going to have an apartment all to yourself but that someone else is sleeping there too and you wouldn't even know it's that's freaky and then I think about like what if I would have slept in that other bedroom and you know I'd be fast asleep at three o'clock in the morning and I'd wake up to a stranger like standing over the bed like what I can't even imagine what would have happened because I would have freaked out. <laughs> I mean, that's if you're not expecting somebody and someone suddenly shows up, that's like anxiety attack right there. <laughs> and then Maureen texted the host, you know, saying, by the way, your daughter came in at like three o'clock in the morning and scared my sister and, and that was a whole thing. And he's like, oh, she came home at 3 a.m. That's not good. And I just wish that, I don't know if he knew that she was going to be staying there, like just kind of popping by or whatever, but I wish that there would have been more clear communication from his part saying, oh, by the way, my daughter might be coming by in the morning to sleep. Or I wish she would have said like, hey, dad, can I, can I sleep in your house for tonight or something? I wish... Maybe that stuff did happen and it was just uh, awkward. And honestly, like I was waiting for him to say, I have no daughter or my daughter died in the seventies or something. I was waiting for some kind of horror twist. I mean, other than that, I've had really great experiences with Airbnb. I, it's something I, I will be keep using. This was just like a thing that happened that was just, not really traumatizing, but you know, it just freaked me out like a whole lot. And honestly, like in a way, I'm glad it happened because it's inspired me to write this thing for Natural D20 that's going to be coming up, but we're in the early stages of it right now, so I'm not going to say anything else about it. But thank you for watching. Hopefully I'll do more videos like this coming up. I'm just not feeling too good. Make sure you subscribe and all that kind of stuff. I have a lot of like story times coming up. I've made a list of ones that I want to do. I just need to get around to feeling better to actually do them. But I'll see you guys later. Bye.